by the blackout. We in the pad house. Don't throw stones to the glass house. Special with a glass mouth. You can't do it with your back out. What's up, people? My name is Edward. And hi, my name is Chi. Today, we're going to be showing you how to get a smaller waist without losing your curves. <laughs> <laughs> Back in November, Chi, what were your measurements and what were you trying to do? So, in November, my measurements were like uh, 23.75 inches. Keep going. <laughs> and my hips, did I say 23.75 inch waist? Mm. Seven five, yeah. And uh, my hips were thirty six to thirty seven. Yeah. And during that time, I was really skinny, and like the pictures, you'll see the pictures coming up now. And I was trying to gain more weight, especially to my hips and my butt area. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that was my my goal. So during that time, I was eating a lot of junk food. <laughs> He I had was you on giving there. me a lot I had of junk. Food. Diet he was giving me biscuits, for the first two weeks, chocolates. For the first two weeks, she said I've been following the diet, everything's been fine, and yeah, I had calculated that there would be a pound of fat <laughs> gained or a pound of weight gained um, every week. Mm. There was no changes, and it was actually going down. And I was like, hell no, man. I was I said, no, you know what? I said, you know what? You're gonna eat what I eat. I said, you're gonna eat what I eat. You're gonna have 2,800 calories. So that's what we did. Extra virgin olive oil went in everything. There was chocolate. In my there smoothie, was and I had two smoothies a day, and he made me put two tablespoons of extra virgin. And you know what? She hated me the whole time. But you know what? It tasted. We, we got like some <laughs> results. Eventually, we got some results. So in December, what happened was um, her waist actually went up to 26 inches, which was not planned, and her hips went up to about 38. And if you actually do the maths, from 23.75 to 26, and from 36 to 38, that's about two inches, um, relatively for both. Now that was a big fail because we had hypothesized, according to research, that um, premenopausal women tend to store more fat down below than up above. So what that meant, or what we were trying to get, was obviously a gain in the waist, let's just say the waist went up to 25. We were expecting a bigger gain in the hips and the glutes. And then later on when we're gonna cut all of the weight, it makes sense, you're gonna end up with some profit. Mm. That's not what happened. So what went wrong, I think, was the fact that we had too many calories in, and the fact that she was having lots of like sugary products such as biscuits and all of that stuff that has simple sugars um, such as fructose, such as glucose and we've looked at research and research says that when you have an overage of calories and you're having lots of simple sugars you tend to store a lot of it in, on your, your yeah, trunk, your torso, your torso, like your waist and stuff mm -hmm. and a lot of it was stored in her lower back as well that was not what we wanted yeah. quickly just letting you guys know about this because um, lots of people when they're trying to gain weight and they're trying to get this slim thick or thick physiques they look at all of these um, YouTube people that are telling them have a Peterman, take a Peterman it's going to slow down your metabolism it's going to allow you to gain weight easily with this experiment we did where she gained fat up above and down below a Peterman won't make you fit, it will make you fat let's be honest, yes. yeah? it's going to make you if look the works. same, just if heavier if your goal is just to put on weight and you're not trying to increase your hip to waist ratio a Peterman will help you, even if you're exercising which she was, it was the same ratio the same, literally the same so make sure you don't just use a Peterman make sure you don't just go for an excess of calories you're going to be disappointed with your results so anyway G, let's go to waist to hip ratio and we're going to speak about relativity Explain to them about relativity and the waist-to-hip ratio. So relativity um, is, in terms of your waist-to-hip ratio, is no matter how big your hips are, if your waist is the same, then you don't really have big hips. That's what we're saying. So what we're saying is some people are looking on at how to get their hips bigger. I think you're thinking about this whole situation a little bit wrong. Think about obviously how to get your hips bigger, but also how to get your waist smaller. If you've already got a small waist and you're trying to get your hips bigger, fine. If you've already got um, big hips and you've got a big waist, you're trying to get your waist smaller and that's yes. going to make your hips look bigger. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes you don't have to make your hips bigger, you just need to make your waist smaller. So we're going to prove this point with the waist to hip ratio um, chart here. So as you can see, we've put Chi's name here with lots of famous Instagram models that have some really crazy and curvy physiques and celebrities are here as well. So we have Chi up top here, we have Yoda Yamane and she does what? Um, She's a fashion over model and mm. she has You'll see her most of the high-waisted jeans. Yeah, she they always get her to wear the high-waisted jeans because she makes it look really good. <laughs> We've got Kim K, you know who that is. We've got Anastasia. Just forget it, just say K. Fitko. I don't know how to say the surname. I can't pronounce the KV. I have a really bad and JLo. <laughs> and JLo. So basically these are the hip to waist ratios. So in November, this was cheese hip to waist ratio. 
2.23.75 divided by 36. That's what you get. Um, her hip to waist, waist ratio as measured to date is 0.6. So um, what is your hip measurements today? Today, mm. today it's 40.5 inches, or nearly 41. Nearly 41. And my waist is 24.5. 24.5, so that gives her inches. a grand total of 0.6. Yoda Yamane, um, her waist is 24 inches, her hips are 38. That's still a great ratio, she's on, at 0.63. Kim K, um, I forgot what we used, but I think we used 26 and, 40, or, uh, and 39, something weird 39. like that. We found all these measurements online. How accurate they are, we don't actually know. But um, that came to 0.62. Then we had Anastasia Fitko, and that came to 0.63, and JLo, who has 0.7. Now, um, the ideal waist to hip ratio to be an hourglass is normally 0.7. So if you have a 0.7, you will look good in sort of body form dresses. Uh, measure your waist to hip ratio now and check what your values are. You can compare them to this chart and us. So if you have a 0.6 or near 0.6 ratio, you look like an Instagram model. That's exactly how you'd look when you wear high waisted jeans, those types of garments. If you're a 0.7, you look good in body form dresses and you have more of an hourglass physique. Now I've put this here because Chi's uh, measurements are really really good in comparison with even these Instagram models. A lot of them actually have done surgery and we're not going to obviously play on which ones yeah. you can do the maths. But um, as you can see the exercise and training methods we're promoting with Zygostatics which is only bodyweight exercise is great because Chi, did you go to the gym to actually achieve these results? No. It was all done in her house, her own house. In this bedroom. With bodyweight exercise. <laughs> Now, I'm only mentioning yeah. this because lots of people, when they want to actually train their glutes or hips, they, the first thing they think of is, I need to go to the gym, mm. I need to do body, um, weights, weighted squats. You know what, I fair enough. If stuff. you go to the gym just for motivation, mm. fine. You know, I just think it's a waste of money because you're not using weights anyway. Mm. And unless you're just running on the treadmill, you're just paying for a mirror, maybe, and a mat. Depends. If you're going to the gym because of convenience, fine. But I think what you girls mm. need to look at is bodyweight exercises. That's the way forward. Me and Chi have both never lifted weights in our life and we're both obviously in good um, shape and condition. And how accurate is this chart as well? We're just going to quickly do a quick comparison of Chi and Yodit because Yodit, um, her measurements are really close to Chi's and you can see her ratio is quite close to Chi's as well. So they're both 5'6", yeah, so the same height, the weight is the same as well. Yodit Yamane's weight online is 60kg, Chi's weight today was 60.4kg, yeah? Um, body frame is different. I think Chi's shoulders are narrower than Yodit's. Yodit has got broad shoulders, so she's an hourglass type physique, whereas Chi is more, more of a pair. So we're going to put these um, stuff online or stuff on the screen so you can see it. Um, I think also the ratio of obviously their proportions are different. I think Yodit might have shorter legs than Chi. I think Chi's legs are a little bit longer. So all of these factors affect how you look. So I want you to compare these two images that you see on um, back to back or side to side and look at the two physiques and see where you can notice the differences. Um, also, Chi's hips are bigger than Yodit's. Chi's hips are at the moment 40, Yodit's came at 38. So that's the widest part around your, your what? Your ass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Yodit's waist is 24, Chi's is 24.5. So Yodit's waist is a little bit smaller than Chi's at the moment. And that makes sense because Chi's now going up into bulking again. Yeah. Yodit looks really lean. so. Um, that's the measurement, so there you go. Um, all of that stuff there is there you for it. your information. Now we're gonna show you how to actually lose your waist, lose your love handles, get smaller waist, keep your hips and your curves. So Chi, what do carbs do in the body? First of all, so, let's just think about carbs in the simplest form. What do carbs do? So carbs just provide energy. Exactly, they That's provide your body with energy. They're stored in your muscle and your liver. Now, research has shown that carbs are important to prevent muscle from breaking down. So carbs are, I'll say the most important thing you need to have in your body, aside from protein, it's that's carbs. going to actually retain your muscle. So when you're losing weight, most people will then cut the carbs. If you cut the carbs, you will, you will also be more likely to lose your muscle. Yeah, and once you lose muscle tone in your, your glutes, your thighs, um, you're gonna end up losing your waist and your curves. That's not what you want. Now protein, she explained to them protein. Um, protein is great at building your muscles and I mean everyone keeps talking about protein but um, you need to think about what types of protein you're eating because mm. sometimes it's fatty exactly especially in meats like lamb red meat mm. and um, yeah basically all red meat yeah. and sometimes all meat is fattening anyway but it depends on the cut as well yeah like yeah, chicken like breast, breast is fine chicken breast is fine <laughs> it's quite a lean cut of yeah. meat some other cuts that chicken are the thigh. best and the best tasting 
Um, they have a Chicken higher um, content of fat. <laughs> Chicken fat. She I'm loves hungry. that. Has a higher content of fat. So she explained to them about muscle use. <laughs> explain to them about muscle use. It's fine. So, muscle use is just basically how you're engaging your muscles. Engaging. Engaging. Engaging your muscles. Engaging. How you're using your muscles. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what happens in the no, hospitals? No, Bunny, what happens in hospitals? When um, people so, are injured for long periods of time, they're mobilized. What happens? Yeah, so they start losing their muscle and their shape. And yeah, so if you don't engage the muscle, your body starts saying, okay, we don't need it anymore. So let's just take it away. It's going to break it down. Yeah. So we're just saying this because a lot of people have the perception that you can just diet and not do exercise and you're going to lose weight. And for some reason, it's only going to come off your waist. That is, is, is impossible. The low down is this, yeah, because I've just given you guys a hard dilemma. You can cut your carbs if you want to. It's going to increase the amount of protein or muscle fibers that you're going to lose. So you're going to end up starting to lose your curbs. Carb, um, curves, sorry, I got confused with curves and carbs. Yeah, you're going to start to lose your curves. Mm -hmm. So what you want to make sure you do is, I think for now, just for now, don't cut your carbs. If you're a professional athlete or you're, you're looking to get shredded, fine, cut your carbs. You're not that person, don't cut your carbs because you're going to end up um, doing more damage than good. Now protein, um, you want to have high protein, obviously not too much protein and not cooked in the way you want to cook yeah, the meat. Don't fried, fry it, not deep um, fried. don't pan fry it. You want to grill it, grill the meat and you'll be okay, fine, good. And uh, muscle use, we've covered that for you. Yep. Um, easiest way to do this is what? They need to work out their what? Your TDEE. Yeah, and that is and what? It's basically an online um, calculator, it's free. You just put in your height, your weight, your, your weight, occupation. Your occupation. It's going and to give you your maintenance it gives calories. You, yeah, the maintenance calories, which you'll then you need to take away for 100. Basically, no, 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 don't take away for 100. For, so, on the, so anything under your maintenance calories, you're going to be losing weight, which is good. This workout, every time you do this workout, how many calories does it burn you? 100 calories. About 100 basically. calories. You want to do this twice a day. So you want to do it morning and night. Why do you want to do it in the morning, Chi? Because your body will be forced to use your energy during the day. Exactly. So your, your glycogen is your, basically, is your stored glucose. In the morning, you've just fasted, your glucose levels are depleting. This workout is just going to help to shift your, glu your glycogen stores out of the way. Once you run out of glycogen and glucose, your body's going to start metabolizing your fat and your muscle protein. And obviously, you want to keep your muscle. The workout is going to have used your muscle, so your body's going to think twice before breaking that down. And you're also going to be having higher protein, so it's not going to really want to take your muscles away. It's not going to really want to break down your muscle. It's going to go for your fat, so you're going to notice um, weight loss in the waist primarily. If you do it right, that's what you're going to get. So you have to do it morning and evening twice a day. You can do it once a day if you want. Yeah, twice a day. you can do it in the evening if you want, yeah. but the morning is more. Important. You can do it three times a day if you want to. But anyway, every time you do it, about 100 calories, 100 calories. So now you're you're down 200 calories in the day. So if you have your maintenance calories and you're down 200 calories in the day. Um, you will lose a decent amount of weight. Um, two, what's seven times two? 14. 14. You're going to lose half a pound a week if you do this workout twice a day and you hit your maintenance calories. So this is like keeping your diet just at the maintenance level of calories, doing this workout twice a day, you're going to lose half a pound a week and it's going to be from the right areas. Mm -hmm. If you want to lose more weight in the week, more than obviously half a pound, you can then have a deficit of more calories. Mm -hmm. So you can decide to maybe have 200 calories less than your um, TDEE and then do this workout twice a day. You're going to be minus 400 calories. That's going to equal almost a pound a week of loss. Uh, I think we've gone into this too much, man. We've, we're giving you too much information here, all for free. What do they need to do to you, man? They need to what? You need to comment, you need to like, you need, you need to, to subscribe. You need to subscribe, man. Like, what's this stuff, man? Like, like we're, we're giving you too much information, for real. I'm feeling that, but. Um, we just want to help you guys. We want you guys to be the best version of yourselves, right? Without surgery. Yeah, without surgery, because everything here is done 100% naturally. Um, all good. As you can see, the results are clear. You can see the results. We're, we're going to try it. Wins. We're trying to go for the 0.58 ratio for Chi. Hope yeah. you like the workout. Peace. <laughs>